Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Hello and welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Today, my guest is Leora Leon of Los Angeles. Um, Leora is the host, uh, is a TV host at the Binge Network, is a keynote life change speaker, author of The Powers in You, The Four Week Plan, Divine Life Coach, uh, Divine Path Life Coach, actually, Past Life Regression Therapist, really all of the things that make my world complete. Um, (laughs) Leora, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Christy. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, my goodness. I have to ask, you you are a past life regression therapist, and you studied with Brian Weiss. I did at the Omega Center in upstate New York, which it was, you know, we had 150 people right there, but it was right one-on-one. And he and his wife uh, did the seven-day class. And it, it was really exciting because he's such a master and he's one of the pioneers, you know, along with Dolores Canyon, but he he's brilliant. And yeah. What an amazing experience. Yeah, he it was, you know, the whole experience at Omega. I don't know if you know about Omega, but um, it's up in the Catskills and it used to be a camp for children back in the day, back in the 40s or 50s. And so they have organic food. You live in a cabin, you walk to your different sites and every morning get up and do your things. And it's just it's an empowering, beautiful, natural experience. And then, you know, working with Dr. Weiss, uh, you know, it just, he's so brilliant. Uh, You know, there were a lot of uh, psychologists there, psychiatrists there, a lot of doctors. And then there were people, you know, like myself and others that just wanted to experience that and be able to teach. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. And you're also, you also do so many of the things that I do as well. You're a Reiki master and you're a Reiki master teacher. And And I'm a shaman. I started out as a shaman. And, you know, my whole life, I had dabbled in spirituality, you know, as you, you know, when you're growing up, I was an intuitive when I was young, I could see visions and all of this stuff. And it happened throughout my life, really intense. And then I kind of got away from it, because I just, I didn't know how to deal with it. And I didn't really need to at that time. And it came back to where the point um, I got married, I had children, I had a son with severe autism. Um, My life, my marriage wasn't good, all these problems. And you know, if you don't clean up all of these things in your lifetime, past life and current life, emotional, uh, physical issues, that it's going to keep reoccurring until you learn the lesson and move on. And you know, one day I was at the the bottom of the bottom and I was trying to make things work with my husband and, and everything had bottomed out and we were sitting there eating tostadas and I was just trying to work my life out and I'm sitting there eating and I bite into this tostada and a vision of a wolf comes out and bites it and I'm like, holy crap. And I'm thinking, did I imagine that? And So I took another bite and the wolf comes out again. And I'm like, okay, this is crazy. And I've been getting migraines, really severe migraines. And so I call up my girlfriend. I said, you won't believe what happened. And she was a psych nurse. And she goes, I think you need to get a CAT scan. That sounds like a tumor. (laughs) Oh my And, And I'm like, no. And I knew, you know, we know inside. And so earlier, about a month earlier, I had gone to the Learning Light Center um, in Anaheim. And that's where, um, oh, who's the, uh, she wrote a lot of uh, books, uh, Angels. Green Virtue? 
the adoring virtue. She started at the learning light. Uh, the guy um, that does all the UFO stuff on radio, he has a... Uh, Judge Nori. Judge Nori started at the... Oh, my at the, God. Yeah, so all these, because it had been around, like, since the 60s. So a month before that, I'd gone to the learning light, and they had a spiritual fair, and I had a healing. And so I text this guy, and he was a shaman, and I said, hey, can you call me? I had an incident. So finally, he calls me, and he said, when the wolf comes to you, he says, are you doing what you want to in your life? And I said, no, absolutely not. And he goes, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I'd like to go into healing. And he goes, well, you need to be certified and to work at the Learning Light anyhow. And so I said, how do I do that? He goes, well, I teach shaman lessons. I said, all right, sign me up. So I started doing shaman lessons and it was only a six week course. And I said, at the end of it, I got my certification. I said, no, I said, I want to work with you. Tell me everything that you know. And for a year I studied with him. And in the middle of my training, I developed stage three breast cancer. Oh my. Now my whole life, I knew I was going to die at 56. And it was two weeks before my 56th birthday. Had I not been on that trajectory to be a shaman, I would have probably died because it was in my lymph nodes. But I knew it was a lesson. My shaman train, training made me understand that everything that comes to you is a lesson that you created. Mm -hmm. And so, boom did my shaman training, then I went into Reiki, then I went into channeling, I was certified, certified, I wanted to build all these certifications, and especially in hospitals, they will take Reiki if you're certified, right? So that's what started everything. And I started to change my life. And I started to realize that Everything in my life I had created, and I can't change my husband, I can't change this, I can't change that, but what I can change is me. Yeah. And then I started, and everything everything shifted, and then I started shifting, and oh boy, what a, uh, what a ride. You know that when you start to make these changes, life, it's, it's a bumpy ride. Put on your seatbelt. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, things fall away from you that no longer serve. You're no longer a vibrational match to many of the people around you, right. to the way you live, to how you earn your money. You're no longer a vibrational match to a lot of those things. It's yeah. Cool. And you learn that you create your reality. Yeah. And a long time ago, I read um, a book called Seth Speaks by Jane yes. Roberts, right? right? Right. And way back then, it's it planted a seed mm -hmm. and from that point on I knew that you could manifest I knew that you could create the world that you want to and I knew you had to do the work that you came in to do mm -hmm. you know and then you do the work until you die there's no vacation like oh I and I and, and a couple of years ago I got to the point where I'm like hey I love myself everything's awesome and then boom here comes the big, <laughs> here comes the big lesson that says, oh, no, you don't. You have a lot more work to do. So, <laughs> and so what was the, what was the work then? Well, the work then was that um, I met my brother. So I found out I had a different father oh my. and um, I met a brother, a whole family that I didn't know I had. And, um, you know, a father who didn't accept me that didn't think that I was his daughter. And I'm like, well, DNA doesn't lie, because all these people know I'm related to you now. And so that point of when my father wouldn't even talk to me, I remember I was outside. Um, and I was talking on the phone to his wife and I said, he, she goes, well, he doesn't believe you're his daughter. And I said, well, DNA does. And I'm, you know, my brother, I'm, he's my brother. This is your, his sister is my aunt and everybody's done the DNA and I am definitely. And so he goes, well, he doesn't want anything to do with you. And I'm like, okay. So I get off the phone and I'm walking around my pool and I'm kind of crying a little bit because you expect it to be this great, you know, you both meet and run and embrace each other. 
but I'm, I'm standing by the pool and all of a sudden I look over and I see this little apparition of a little girl crying and I realize it was me mm-hmm. and I walk over and I pick her up and I said, it's okay. Look how far we have come. And she disappeared. Then I heard a voice say, open your hands. I put my hands out in front of me and this ball of light came down and rested in my hands and they told me, put it in your chest. So I did and I could actually feel my vibration change. And it was like, you did the work, you faced your fear and here is your prize. You get to move up the ladder. Right. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. beautiful. How did that story end? Well, it just, you know, there, there were a lot of, it, it just, I keep growing and I keep, you know, every time that you work at being the optimum that you can embody mind and spirit and thoughts, words and actions, every time that you work to stay in the vibration of love, you release energies, past life energies too, which are coming at you all the time, right? You know that. We have past life stuff. Not only do we have to deal with the current energy, but everything carries energy. Everything has a vibrational force. All of that past life stuff, what is your preference? Like people say, I don't believe in past life. Well, why do you have the statue of an African prince? Oh, I just liked it. Why did you like it? You liked it because you had a lifetime. You were attracted to that. Why is your house decorated in, you know, a Victorian era? You know, because you're attracted to it. You That's a past life energy. So all these energies were constantly releasing. My son just died uh, last year and it's, it's not even been a year yet. And that changed. That was a huge lesson, um, a lesson. Cause I would always tell my clients and my students, you know, feel the energy and then allow it to be released. And this was the hardest thing that I ever, I'm still feeling it. There's still days when I, I had a friend that died too this year and uh, last year, and I had to put together a memorial movie and it just brought all this energy. But now when times get hard, or I'm going through something or whatever it is, I step back and I say, okay, what is this lesson? What are the mechanics of it? Why did I put it in my energy? And I step back and then I say, okay, universe, I'll feel the energy so that I can release it. Just please make it, you know, expedite it for me. And then I go on. And we all go through those depressions. We all go through those feelings of, and what they are are catalysts, right? Right. Those depressions and those feeling everything that we've experienced in this last year of loss, it has been a catalyst to make us grow and make us be better people, right? Mm-hmm. To help us on our divine path. And that divine path is who we are out of the physical. We are part of the God source. And we come down and we incarnate into bodies so that we can go through this incarnational path. And do you know what the incarnational path produces? What's that? It's got a byproduct. That byproduct is love. So every time you raise your vibration or you release energy and you move up on your divine path, the byproduct is love. So when that thing happened with my father, that byproduct was love. It was me facing my fears and growing. So imagine that times how many billion people on the planet. Right. And that's what incarnational planets do. They, they house people that are raising their vibration, going through incarnation and incarnation so that it can help balance the multiverse. Absolutely. Right? Oh my gosh. I had a, I just before um, sitting down to talk with you today, I had a, a client session and it was, it was that, you know, the earth is going through this uh, tremendous transformation and we all have the choice and it's all, it's all a choice. You know, you could have chosen to take that moment and feel dejection and despair. And you probably did to some extent, 
It's normal to do that. And we need to acknowledge the feelings that we have. But then you had a choice. You could stay there or you could turn to love. Right. And I call it looking at the mechanics. Because when you break it down, like the way that I see, I see very alien-like. I I can see things when I'm driving. I can see trajectories. I can. So I look at the mechanics. Why is it happening? And I can choose to wallow and sit there for a while. But now that doesn't last long. Because you and I both know after you've done the work, you don't want to sit there. No, and it's even, uncomfortable. No, and Buddha said, you do not have to suffer to grow. That's a choice. Humans think that they have to suffer in order to grow. So that's what we do, right? And we don't have to. No, no. Buddha said the only source of suffering is, a, a, um, oh, what is the word? It's self-inflicted. Not, well, it's, it's holding on to outcome. It's holding on to expectation, right? Right. Right when we um, attachment—that's what the word is. Okay, so, exactly. So that's the only real source of of anything negative in our lives is is attachment, attachment to outcome, attachment to a certain uh, emotion. Is that attachment? If we can learn just this release, then we can get the we can get the lesson. Right. Yeah. And even, you know, like on my TV show, when I first started it, and so I'm with Binge Network, it's called the Powers yeah. in You channel. And I started getting caught up in social media. How many likes did I get? How many reads? Did I, and on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook. Yeah. And, you know, you always hear them telling you, hey, this is not what it's about. What are you doing? Because energy will shape the direction that you that you move in. And you're never going to get something trying to grab it. You're always going to get it knowing that it's already there and trusting. And so now I don't care about any of that. I don't look at it. I don't feel that that defines who I am. You know, I just kind of let it go because I don't want to have that stress. I want to do what I do, interview people and have fun. I don't want it to be stress. I don't want any of that negative energy around me. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and so tell us about your show on the Binge Network. It's the Powers of You. Yeah, it's the Powers in You channel. And basically, when I first started it, I wanted to cover everything because I, I went through this kind of long line of going through platforms and going through platforms. And then like, oh, you can't talk about chakras and you can't talk about this. And then, no, no, gay people are not good. And I'm like, oh, so finally I found Binge, which is an amazing channel. They allow you to be you and do what you want to do and do what you trust. And so I said, I'm going to cover everything and empowerment of women, uh, LBGTQ, all of these things. and. So I did. I I interviewed uh, police from uh, LAPD and we talked about defunding and how it wasn't a great idea to defund, which is true. It doesn't matter what side you're on. If you want to defund, you're not educating. Defunding means take away the good things. And you're, you know, so anyhow, and and I had... um, a a guy who is a a gay life coach and he deals with gay men and women and helps them love themselves a transgendered woman um, and how light and and she was a republican a marine and lapd too and so then what happened is as i started going on I like talking to people because it all had the powers in you behind it. What are the powers that we have? What are the, what's the power in you? But then now I'm kind of going down the spiritual realm. I want people to, I don't think it's too soon for people to know about all the things that you and I know about and how to empower our life. Well, and that's spirituality. Any way you want to look at it, it's, it's understanding that you have the power. You have the power to create the life that you want. And that's kind of what it's about now, giving you, you know, I talk to shamans. I talk to past life uh, regression therapists. um, I've got someone who practices witchcraft coming up. And so all these different people that it's a different outlook that I want people to start getting used to. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think the time is the time is now even even 10, 15 years ago, we would have been thought of as crazy for talking about chakras and 
and auras and channeling yeah. and all this woo woo stuff. And no, 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 right. we're coming into that, aren't we? Yeah. And so today we come together to radiate self love. Why was self love important to mention today? So much that we have a, a an episode with that theme. You know, people don't understand self love. They think that self love is uh, vanity. Right. And Humanism. yeah, and it's not self love. I have developed an equation. And self-love is being at the optimum in your body, in your mind, in your spirit. And that means eating all the foods that have the right chi for you and chi is energy. So you want to eat foods in your local area. You want to eat foods that aren't, you know, downloaded with pesticides and all of that. Non-organic, you know, you want to have organic and non-GMO. And then in your mind, you want to do uplifting things, read books that are uplifting. You want to um, keep social media at a minimal. And then into your spirit, you want to meditate, take that time to connect to your source. The source is where you come from. And then you go three steps further and you think about thoughts, words and actions keep those all at the optimum so your actions is that in the vibration of love words are those in the vibration of love thoughts and thoughts are the most powerful because thoughts project what you think about today is your tomorrow and so we want to stay at the optimum in all of those areas and that's the vibration of love that's truly loving yourself loving yourself is being as close to your divine self which means out of this physical body as you can be staying in the vibration of love that's self-love being who you really are yeah, oh, absolutely. And everything else follows from that, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'd like to talk a bit about your shamanistic practices. Um, so you you studied with um, a teacher there at the light. What is the lighthouse? Learning the learning light in Anaheim. Yeah, I studied for over a year. I put in over a thousand hours of training. And shamanism, unlike Reiki, I mean, it's like Reiki where you uh, you are channeling energy. You're the, the conduit, right? Because it's not really you doing the healing. It's right. the higher source. So Reiki and shamanism are alike in that source. But what embraces, and I know people that are Reiki masters, and I'm a Reiki master, but they're shamans too, because shamans, there's so much more. I see when I go into a person, first of all, we have a different way. We always let energy out at the feet. So after we break down the energy throughout the body, we always go to the end of the feet and let it drain. A lot of people don't do that. And then when you don't do that, it gets stagnant in the body. So it's not good. But shamanism incorporates animal medicine. So the the medicine of Mother Earth, when you see a butterfly, what does that mean? When you see a number, what does that mean? Um, It incorporates past lives. When I work on a client, I see everything. I see um, if they were abused as a childhood, I get symbols in my head. I remember when I first started doing it, I'd see this symbol of a little girl like this. And I'm like, why am I seeing the same symbol? And then it was telling me this is a symbol for abuse, whether it be sexual, physical, or mental. And so then I would talk to my client afterwards. But you go to all these different uh, points. You you channel the energy. My, my uh, It's interesting, my teacher... Uh, who uh, now tones. So you know what toning is, right? And toning is when uh, you're channeling these vibrational sounds. And um, when I had breast cancer, so after our class, he would do a healing on me. And he started making these weird noises. And they told him, put one hand on over her breast where the cancer is and then hold one hand up and so I could feel digging into my breast where the the cancer was and I opened my eyes because I know you don't touch your clients and he had his hand 12 inches above me and 
he said the aliens told him to hold his hand because I have tons of alien energy. I mean, that's a whole nother show, but they're, they're <laughs> around me all over the place. And he said they came in and they said they were going to heal and they healed through the hand and then down into uh, into me and they were digging around. And sure enough, you know, my cancer with treatment and everything. And I did, uh, you know, Eastern treatment. Um, or Western treatment, um, but I did it combined with a belief system as well, and it never came back. But um, so he was healing me that way. And, and, and being a shaman, there's so many things that you're pulling into it. So I think that's kind of what makes it a little bit different. Yo, absolutely. Right. In my Reiki practice, I, I pull in some shamanistic techniques, yes. such soul retrieval, basic soul retrieval, returning energy looking into past lives, um, right. just medical intuition, you know, all of the things that go into yeah. it. It's not anymore, I believe, um, that each modality is strong and powerful, but truly most healers tip, dip into um, a variety of tools in their tool belt Yeah, and use yeah. them all at the same time. When I was young and I I could read people's fortunes and my mother would get these ladies over. Oh, let her read her fortune. She's really good. And I was good. I was spot on. I, I, I just, I know stuff. I see it. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm good. And so I would use regular playing cards and I'd put it down and then, and you know, they would tell me this, this and that, and I'd tell people and it would be true. So it's just a modality that we use because we're all shamans in a way, you know, we're all part of, yeah, absolutely. But our world has so many cool things that I've gone on so many different adventures and it's just, it's been amazingly, I, I love it. I love the world that you and I reside in. I oh, love it. yeah. I mean, it's just magical. And I think it was, magical. I think it was Albert Einstein said that you can look at the world in one of two ways. And I'm sure I'm going to botch this one is if nothing is a miracle and the other is if, as if everything is a miracle, right? I choose yeah. everything is a miracle. And now I just wanted to send a shout out to some of our supporters, Julian, John, James, Marissa, Charlotte, Pauline, Becky, and Louise. Thank you all so much for keeping this podcast going. If you'd like to support this podcast too, please hit the like, follow, or subscribe button, or give us five stars or a positive review wherever you're listening and share this with your friends. You can also subscribe to Radiate You, our private Facebook group for bonus content, including classes and meditations. Another way to support our podcast is to go to radiatewellnesscommunity.com slash podcast and click on the donate now button. However you support us, we greatly appreciate it. And thanks for listening. I choose yeah. everything is a miracle. And it is. And that's the way you change your thinking. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you have a negative thought, you say that no longer serves me and out you go and bring in a new one. Because we do everybody. I asked this guy who was a, a monk and I said, did, did you have negative thoughts? And he said, absolutely. But I tell them they don't live here anymore. You yeah. know, they don't. So you, you have that choice of whether you're going to what you're going to allow in, you know, and what you're going to allow out. So I right. think we know. Right. So I got to tell you the story about my son. So I told you my son passed and, and this is a past life uh, story, but I was having such a hard time because I had to do a DNR on him, a do not resuscitate, which to do that for your child is excruciating. Absolutely. And I, and so months, you know, and it's it, next month, it'll be a year. Mm -hmm. And so I was having a really hard time not feeling guilty, like not feeling like that I killed him because I did this DNR. But so one day in a meditation, he comes to me and he's like, mom, I have to show you this. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, the reason you're feeling this way is because in another life, you killed me. And he showed me a little blonde boy. And I'm like, Oh, my God. And I go, how? And he goes, that's not important. He goes, but what I want you to do 
is I want you to put one hand over your heart and put the other hand up. And this is, I guess, what they do. And I was feeling such pain because that energy of me, and I didn't even realize I had that past life where somehow I killed him as a, he was a child, as a little boy. I didn't even realize it. And so he goes, do this. And then he healed me. And I could feel the energy just being released. After that, I was able to, you know, allow things to progress in a better way. And that didn't mean I didn't get upset anymore. It just meant that, it, it, it you know, releasing him and letting him go and, and not letting him go, but letting those feelings of pain and suffering go in me. So he helped me with it. And one thing before he came in, too, that was really cool. He said, first, when I saw him, he came in and he was on this red planet. And I said, where are you? And he goes, oh, you have to come here to help your spirit actually release the gravitational pull. So oh. not only does the physical have a gravitational pull, but when you are incarnated in the physical, your soul actually is affected because remember, everything's energy. Right. So therefore, the soul goes to these places to help release a gravitational pull. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was so cool. Oh, fascinating. Well, you certainly do have just a wealth of <laughs> amazing experiences. Um, I, I do want to talk a bit about the aliens that you said have a presence in your life. Has that all, have they always been around you? You know, they started making a presence that I didn't realize, but when I started my shaman training and the first time that I went into this uh, Akanda Sashid Ananda meditation, which I had never done before. Mm -hmm. And I went off into, like I could see myself as an embryo floating in the universe. And I had never done that meditation and I was sobbing. So after our class, I go and lay down. And this is the first time. And my teacher does a healing on me. And so I'm laying there. And all of a sudden I'm seeing, boom, all these pictures, 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 and scenarios. And now I know what they all are. But then I see these grays looking at me and they're looking at me. They're like bending over and then it broadens out and I'm on a spaceship and I'm laying on a steel like counter and I could see out the window and it was all the universe. And here's all these grays in robes all around me. Well, I guess when I started to do this meditation, I lit up. So there was my body in a gelatinous form with all of these lights. Now, something that's really weird, my whole life, I had a piece of glass in my hand that I would try to dig out my entire life. As soon as I did that meditation, I no longer have it. I would have my mom feel like, oh, feel that. It's a piece of glass. I went to the doctor. The doctor could feel it, and he tried to dig it out, and it would never come out. So until I did that meditation, so they had been monitoring me my entire time. So then we get done. And I tell my teacher and I'm like, God, this something really weird happened. He goes, well, wait, let me tell you. He goes, I saw you on a ship. You were on this steel slab and there were aliens all around you. And you were on a ship and you were lighting up. I'm like, oh, my God, I saw the same thing. So I was like, and so then things started happening in my room. I would see, I see uh, like a purple blue dots and they come and now, and they were far away and little by little, they would wake me up in the middle of the night. And I would first see a honeycomb pattern above me and it would come down. And my teacher taught me to stay in the vibration of love, keep yourself, because you always know if something happens, you want to surround yourself in that vibration of love and nothing can harm you. So I did that. The honey cones would get closer and I'd say to him, what is this? And he goes, those are collective spirits. That's how they look when there's a collection of them. So then things would start to change and I would start to see graphs with all these different checks with they would change with numbers and, and uh, an alphabet that I didn't understand, but it was just, it was like the matrix. And then they started coming in and just recently now they've been coming uh kind of like vines and one day and I'm always like what is it that you guys want and they go you're just learning where you're keep going don't ask us just trust 
And one day I said, I want to see what you look like because I could feel them. Like, you know, with what we do, you can feel energy and it feels sometimes it feels like bugs crawling. Sometimes it feels electric. All of a sudden they showed me who was around me and there were hundreds, all different species and I kind of went, ooh, because, you know, like when you first see it, you're like, woo. Right. And so that's what they are. And so now they come and I always know and I they, they do something so where you cannot go back to sleep. One night I woke up in the middle of the night and I was dreaming and I was at a party and I was having fun in my dream. And somebody came up behind me and put their hands like this. And all of a sudden I opened my hands and they were brownish gray green long fingers with enlarged and they and then all of a sudden I got the pain in my head like you wouldn't believe it felt like somebody punched me I woke up when they were putting me back so they were putting me in somehow and so in my dream I'm thinking oh it's somebody who is it and then all of a sudden I wake up and I woke up too soon. So I guess that happens is when you wake up, when you're being put back, the pain is excruciating. And I'm like thrashing around. I thought it might have been my son or my husband and he's snoring and nobody's in the room. And I woke up being put back. But I've seen things and they're with me all the time. Uh, they come in like a blue flash and they want me like when they want me to uh, they want me to realize what's going on right now. Take note of this. So they'll come during the day at night. I see them every night. One night while I was awake, I watched TV and to go to sleep. And so I just turned the TV off. And all of a sudden, I see this whole, I'm in a whole different place and I'm in a beautiful home very modern all glass and I look out and it's all plants but plants that I didn't see that were not indigenous to this planet and I felt oh my god I'm at home I'm at home and I stayed there for about 20 minutes just feeling and then you kind of feel like oh, I want to go back mm. you know but I know I've got to do the work here right you know so a lot of cool a lot of cool things. I uh, One time I was doing a healing and I have my office uh, downstairs and I was doing a healing and my I have a little Shisu dog and he came to the stairs and I was doing my healing and I would get people to come in when they're when I'm healing. I'll get different entities. They say, can we come in? Yes. So I had a gray in me and they said, yeah, go ahead. And I'm doing the healing. And all of a sudden it sees the dog and it jumps out of me. And it was so weird because while I'm doing this healing, this whole scenario is going on with me and the alien sees the dog and it jumps out and I'm like, it's okay. It's just a dog. Then it goes back in and finishes the healing. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Um, now you mentioned your husband and all of this. What does he think of that, of all of this healing and crazy stuff? You know, a long time ago, when I was writing my first book, and they're like, you can't talk about stuff like that. And you can't do this. And you can't do that. And they were all weirded out. And I just kept going on my journey. And then after a while, even my son, who was severely autistic, he would yeah. take me into my room and say, close your eyes. So that if I were upset that day, he'd make, take me in and make me go meditate. So people can feel the vibration. My husband, can I have a healing? My daughter, I need a healing. Okay, mm. let's do it. So, and people will tell me, oh no, I've got two kids or I've got three kids and I can't. And I'm like, no. If I, And I had a son who had to have attention, you know, autistic kids, every three seconds, like I need this, I need this, I need this. And I, I had to have a few rows with him where he'd be slamming on the door and I'd like, don't you ever, and then he'd stop. And he realized that mom needed her time, you know, to, and, you know, now it's just second nature. They, any craziness that they thought that I was, or that they see the difference in me, you know, they see the difference in them. Cause when you raise your vibration, the vibration changes all the way around you. So if you're having problems in your marriage, change you, you know? Absolutely. That's the one constant you take with you everywhere. Right. Right. 
Right. Um, and that I call it an unintended consequence of the QHHT that I do. You know, in QHHT, you come in with a set of questions and a set of things that you'd, you know, like healed. And um, I find the unintended consequence is that when we raise the vibration, we have a shift and uh, everybody around us shifts as well. And so I'll hear from clients who say, you know, I got home after the session and my kids were arguing again and it was looking like it was going to be a knockout knockdown drag out and I was just peaceful more so than I ever have been during these these situations and then it right. very quickly burned out which it never used to do without intervention and so the unintended consequences when mom or dad shifts their vibration everybody else because kids kids like, feed off of the energy. People feed off your energy. People feed off the energy, right? Yeah. You change yourself and it changes the people around you. Matt Kahn says this. You heal yourself. When you heal yourself, you heal the people around you. Right. And, and then also that doesn't mean that you have to keep people around you either. True. Absolutely. They can fall away. Yeah, and they do. And the, it seems like with a lot of the people that I know that are in this energy, they're very selective about who they have in their energy because having someone who is toxic, it's just, even if it's family, it, it becomes overwhelming. You cannot handle it. You need you know, what you need. And so a lot of people have fallen away through either my doing or them not getting what they need. You know, I know as healers, we tend to give and give and give and give, right? And we have to be really careful, you know, and now I only give to who reciprocates. I've learned that I'm not going to give to someone who does not reciprocate because I don't have the time and I don't have the energy. I'm not going to keep working on this when you're not doing the work. So adios amigo. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But, but we have to, I mean, but also having someone who reciprocates, that means that they're going to take some responsibility for their own energy. Right. Right. And because you, they come to you, you're the light and they want, What's the easiest way to get light is move toward it mm. rather than creating your own light. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. And so, you know, if someone is wanting to, to gravitate toward that and wanting to overstep the bounds and I just say, that's, that's great. When would you like to come in for a session? <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's set something up. Yeah, and if they're they're willing to take responsibility. Then they then they will. And if they're not, that's okay. I send them love and send them on their way. And right um, when they're ready, then they'll then they'll come back around. But yeah, we have to. It's called protecting your energy. Yeah, you have to set boundaries. And and we don't. We a lot of us that are where we are is because we chose a path that was super difficult, and we had this amazing tenacity to keep working through it and working through it and working through it. So we've done the work. We want to be around like type of people who are willing, and they don't have to be where you are, but show that you're doing the work. Be consistent. And you know, I I don't. And at, at my age anymore, I don't have the energy to give. I'll give you, you know, what you give me, you're going to be a reflection of me and we'll give it equally, but I'm not going to give more than I can because I need it for me, you know, yeah, so, and Absolutely. people may think that's selfish, but it's not selfish, you know, as mothers too, you know, young mothers, and that's the way I was, I gave everything, everything, I mean, I was insane in the PTA, and the women's group, doing all this, taking care of my kids, giving, blah, blah, blah. and I lost my marbles, because I thought giving to everybody of yourself was the way to, and it's absolutely not, giving of yourself first mm. is what is important, that's the self -love. key to self-love. Yes, love absolutely. That's what we're talking about here is that self-love and honoring yourself enough to have a fair energetic exchange and right. that loving boundaries. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm writing a children's book right now called Little Laura, and it's about a little girl that lives with her grandmother, and she ends up going through this whole struggle of she's wishing she could, you know, be like the other kids and, you know, this and that. And so she becomes a butterfly, then she becomes, um, you know, it just goes through this whole thing. And at the end, she goes, I just want to be me. I want to be me. And she goes and she goes, I'm so happy just to be me. And so it's a, a little kid's book showing them how to be happy with who they are and love who they are, you know. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, and now I'm speaking of books, I'm looking through your book, the, your list of books, a sound found, a sand foundation. Right. Yeah, what that was that? That was my first book. And and that was basically I did it in a fictional format because some people were still alive. And um, I'm now working on the second book, Voyage into the Life, which has gone from fiction to real life. And in the Sand Foundation, I go through my entire life and it's raw. It's it's an amazing book because it's a fast read, but you can't put it down. And it's extremely graphic because I was physically physically abused. I was sexually abused. I had all of these things, but now I know that they were all, you know, uh, learning. And even in, uh, I had an out of body experience in the sand foundation where I was in a boating accident and I would lived in, uh, um, Austin, Texas, and we were at hippie hollow and we, I was in a, a tubing and they said, don't go under, don't go off, let us slow down. And then you get off with your person. Well, the person she got off and I said, well, I want to get off. And I went through the middle and immediately I felt like an excruciating pain. And then I blanked out. I wake up and I'm underwater and fish are going by and there's, you know, plants wafting in the water. And all of a sudden I look over and I see my body and my body's just like this. And I wasn't fearful. And all of a sudden, then I felt bliss, pure bliss, which is what it is when we are out of the constraints of the physical. Then all of a sudden, I start getting this download. Boom, 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 boom. Science, math, uh, symbols, things I didn't even know. And like this whole download, like the Encyclopedia Britannica from the multiverse into my head. And then it stopped. And I'm like, whew. And then the slide appears. And they say, you can go in here. And I'm like, and I look over and they said, whatever you do, you have to make a decision because your body can no longer maintain under the water. It had been 15, 20 minutes. My gosh. And people don't believe that, but I'll tell you something later. So anyhow, I said, what do I do? And they say, the choice is up to you. Go into your body or go to the light. So I just put my head into the body and up I went. And I, they had been circling, looking for me for 20 minutes. And my whole life, after I wrote that book, people were like, oh, you're lying. You can't, you know, you can't be under the water for 20 minutes and not die. I, um, I interviewed this woman who does uh, near-death experiences, and she uh, has um, interviewed 2,500 people, and there have been people that woke up in the friggin' morgue. Oh they have been God. dead 24 hours. So she said, oh, yeah, 15, 20 minutes is nothing. So when you have a near-death experience, when people are like saying, you're lying, you're lying. I'm like, I'm not lying. They were, they thought I was gone. And so, yeah. So I, I was out of body. And that was probably the beginning of my path that woke me up and said, hey, there's a lot more. Because near-death experiences, they do that to you. They create a catalyst for you to start moving, right? That's what our whole life is based on, catalyst. People say, I want people to look at um, a catastrophe being a catalyst. So if you have a catastrophe in your life, you lose a job, you lose someone you love, it is a catalyst Exactly. to help you grow help you learn self-love and self-love is learning how to be as close to your divine self as you possibly can get. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, how many times have we taken a tragedy or some, some major setback and it launches us forward into something that we had never even 
dreamed of. Right. That is even yeah. more. Right. Yeah. You look back at things and you think, oh, how did I get, you know, wow, I can't believe I got through it, but I did. We always do. And I tell my students and clients baby steps. I said, when you are learning to walk and you fall down, People don't go, oh, you stupid, come on, blah, blah, blah. They go, good job, way to go, get up and do it again. So be your own coach, be your own cheerleader, because we all fall down and then we get up again. So treat yourself like that little child that is learning to walk. You know, if you want to be depressed or if you if you fall down and, and you need to shut people out, it's OK. You're closed for repairs. Right. That's what I call it. You're closed for repairs. So when I have days where I'm, I'm like, de, de, you know, crying or depressed, they don't happen often. But when they do, I just understand, hey, I'm closed for repairs. I'm repairing what I need to and then I'll come back out. And absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and you recently had COVID. I did. I did. And I, I was very fortunate. Um, it didn't affect me um, as severely. I was down, you know, for a couple of weeks, I was down in bed for like four days. I mean, I've got more rest than I ever had in my whole life. But the headaches, the pain. Um, it, yeah, and it was you know, the vibration of the illness is is not pleasant. It was like having a really bad hangover for a long time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it didn't feel good. But you know, I'm lucky there are people that you know, like you were talking about that are in ICU and, you know, on ventilators. So I, I'm one of the lucky ones um, right. that got through it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you yeah, absolutely got through it. And that happens. So again, I mean, just coming back to the choices that we have, we can either choose to say, ah, oh, geez, I got COVID, um, sucks. Um, you know, if everybody would just mask up, we could be past this and we could stay there or we could say, okay, I got it. I came through it. Um, I know just to, to be a better ambassador for health and public safety, et cetera. Um, I like that. I like that because that could be what a better ambassador, the people that are getting hit hard are the people that I noticed that have autoimmune issues, diabetes, and that's a lot of them is due to not eating healthy. So it could, it could, that could be what a, one of the lessons is to be, take better care of yourself. You know, I, I noticed that. So that's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a choice. We always have a choice. Right. We, you know, it goes back to the old adage, do you see the glass is half empty, half full? This right. mindset and it's our thoughts that we choose, right? And gratitude. Oh, gratitude huge. is the mainstay. If you can do nothing else, be grateful. I have a two, I have like a, a two minute meditation that I do in the morning. I get up and I I connect, I ground, I protect, I think about what I'm grateful for. And then I think about how my day is going to go. What am I going to do today? And how is it going to be good? So if anybody just did that every morning, got up and connected, grounded, protected, gratitude for all of these things, and then how am I going to start my day? You'd be amazed at the change. When you make these little tweaks to your, you know, it changes your life. People say, what did meditation do for you? It changed my life you know absolutely yeah and you i mean you write about this as well you we talked about sand, a sand foundation i always want right. to say a sound foundation but a sand foundation um right. love yourself another book yeah love yourself change your life has now been changed into the powers of you powers in you the four week plan and i'm writing that right now and it's uh, i'm getting it it's getting close to being published but um, it's a workbook so that it will give you everything that I know and everything that I do. And if you follow, because we're talking and it's all, almost 99% of it is based on science now. And that's what I wanted to do. I brought the woo-woo in, but I backed it up with science because it is. And if you follow this plan for 28 days, 
four weeks, you will change your life because, and that doesn't mean life is going to be smooth sailing. It means that you're going to start going, whoa, whoa, whoa. And how do I do it? But you go back to the, the basics and the basics are taking care of your body, mind, and spirit and being in the optimum and watching your words, your thoughts, and your actions, keeping those all in the vibration of love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's one book. And the next book that I'm writing to, I'm writing three at one time right now, but that's Voyage into the Light. And that's the second part of the Sand Foundation, which talks about all these cool things that you and I have gone through going on our journey of becoming shamans and Reiki masters and past life regression therapists. So it's, it, that one's just going to be like super, like nobody will believe it, but <laughs> it's all the things that like when things happen to us, and I know this must happen to you, they're like, eh, I don't know if I believe that, but it's true. You know, oh, we're, we're having, true. yeah, we're having fun. Absolutely. I never doubt anything that comes up anymore. Right. <laughs> yeah like why not that absolutely is true right so thank you so much for joining me today um it's wonderful to meet someone who does many of the same things that i do and is just absolutely amazing i can't wait for your right. book to come out this new workbook yeah, it's yeah. it's hard putting the two together, a book and the workbook. So I, that's what the difficulty I'm having. But yeah, you can find all my information on LeoraLeone.com. Mm-hmm. I'm on Facebook, Leora Leone. I'm on LinkedIn, Leora Leone, Instagram, Leora Leone. So yeah, and I do private sessions. Of course, I do everything through Zoom right now. But, you know, I do past life regression therapists. I don't heal over, you know, I, I, I'm not that I, I do go to clients client's house and heal them but healing is about the only thing I don't do over you know the internet but I do everything else I teach um, and you can just um, on my website it'll take you to my uh, uh, calendar link which if you want to get something you know like a past life regression or coaching or anything you can connect to me there oh I love that I love that and of course you're on the uh, pacific time zone because you're in pacific, Los yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Los Angeles. Um, and it's great to know that you can see clients um, online and right. connect people, you know, just virtually anywhere. Yeah, I see people locally. And, you know, like now we're very, I do healings with a mask. They wear a mask. And so we're in a, you know, pretty much open environment. But I, I go around in this area, but yeah. Well, that's fantastic. And then if, if somebody wants to see your show on the Binge Network, how do we do that? So you go to Binge Network and it's B-I-N-G-E Network. And then you go to the powers in you and it'll click right up and you hit that and it'll show all my shows. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. And then um, you're also, it's also on Roku. It's on Roku. It's on, I think, LG, Amazon. So, yeah, you can find it anywhere. Binge will take you to all those different. uh, And I do have a Roku app. So if you have Roku, you can just click on it there. Oh, fantastic. I think I have an LG app, too. So, yeah. And, of course, the the channels, the power is in you. The power is in you because everybody has power. And if everybody knew the power they had, life would be easy peasy, right? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Leora, for joining. Thank you. Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area, dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.